Hare Krishna everyone. Uh, welcome to today's study of Srimad Bhagavad Gita. We are reading from second chapter, title contents of Gita summarized. We are st- st- going to study text 57. Uh, f- Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Ya Sarvatra Anibesnehas Tatat Prapya Shubha Shubham Navinandanti Nadvesti Tasya Pratna Pratishtita Word to word meaning? Ya. Yeah. Yeah. One who. One who. Sarvatra. Sarvatra. Everywhere. Everywhere. Anibe sneha. Anibe sneha. Without affection. Without affection. Tat. Tat. Dat. Dat. Tat. Tat. Dat. Dat. Prapya. Prapya. Achieving. Achieving. Shubha. Shubha. Good. 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 Ashubham. Ashubham. Evil. 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 Na. 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 Never. Abhinandanti praises na never dvesti envies tasya his pragna perfect knowledge pratishtita fixed translation and purport by his divine guest A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada ki translation In the material world, one who is unaffected by whatever good or evil he may obtain, neither praising it nor despising it, is firmly fixed in perfect knowledge. Please repeat. In the material world, world, one who is unaffected by by whatever good or evil evil he may obtain, obtain, neither praising it nor despising it, is firmly fixed in perfect knowledge. Purport. There is always some upheaval in the material world which may be good or evil. One who is not agitated by such material upheavals, who is unaffected by good and evil, is to be understood to be fixed in Krishna consciousness. As long as is in the material world, there is always the possibility of good and evil because this world is full of duality. But one who is fixed in Krishna consciousness is not affected by good and evil because he is simply concerned with Krishna who is all good absolute. Such consciousness in Krishna situates one in a perfect transcendental position called technically Samadhi. Om Ajnana Trimirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Nama Shri Chaitanya Manobishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamahyam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yuta Padakamalam Shri Gurum Vaishnavam Shra Shri Rupam Sakrajatam Sahagana Ragunatan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sagana Lalita Shri Vishakanvitam Sha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Shri Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanustute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha kalpa tarubhyasya kripa sindhu bhyayevacha Patitanam pavane bhyo vaishnave bhyo namo nama Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadara Shri Vasadi Gaurabhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare 
हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो बिफोर वी डिस्कस द वर्स आई एक्सप्रेस माई दीपस ग्रैटिट्यूड बिकॉज दिस वर्स इज वेरी इंस्ट्रक्ट टू वर्स फॉर मी बिकॉज आई एक्ट टोटली ऑपोजिट टू इट आई I go with happiness I fly in the clouds or with distress I just fall down so I was wondering how can I speak about it because especially in the Vaishnava culture as a part of learning we learn that the preaching should follow by practice the prachar should always followed by uh, achar however uh, it's definitely a mercy that they've given a task so with the task i learned a lot so this service was helping me to grow in my own krishna consciousness so i express my deepest gratitude and i also beg blessings from all the assembled vaishnavas so that i can apply this understanding in my own life and also it will be helpful in your own krishna consciousness and let this class be for pleasure of shri prabhupad my gurudev and vaishnavas so this particular verse um uh, i was uh, looking into meanings of few words upheaval prabhupad says there is always some upheaval in the material world then upheaval means disturbance there is always some disturbance it's also some chaos you can say turbulence or uproar and we see now how the world is affected by this coronavirus and there is floods there is some earthquakes so something or the other there is always a disturbance in the material world and then there is the meaning of good what is good something which we admire something which we praise something which we look forward for or something which we have high regard to have it in our lives and evil what is evil evil is something uh, which put us down which is ridiculing or scorning us or which doesn't allow us to grow so i mean there's many more meanings to it but these are some of the meanings i took so i was thinking how prabhupad writes uh, okay evil is upheaval which i understand okay that is disturbing but prabhupad puts good and evil both are upheaval you know uh, from the very childhood i was always taught a discrimination between what is good and what is evil to make the right choices so that uh, we can live in this world that's how our, our training is there right so which is not wrong but here bhagavad gita is taking us uh, a little step further it's raising our bar we see in uh, in the same chapter 11th shloka Arjuna gets a verbal slap from uh, Krishna saying that you're talking like a learned man but uh, you're not actually behaving in a learned way but if you really see he was right he was discriminating what is good and what is bad but that's what we do also right we always uh, uh, discriminate what is good in terms and what is bad but then krishna starts this whole dialogue of uh, uh, how we are not the body we are the spirit soul how the soul cannot be destroyed at any point of time and uh, how there is transmigration of the soul so he starts and now arjuna instead of rebelling he took the correction very positively okay krishna is saying that i am wrong but i want to know why i am wrong so he then he wants to know what how does a learned person act or speak or how is his mentality so now in this section we are talking about stita pragya he is the learned man who is fixed in krishna consciousness so arjuna admits that he doesn't know what 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 a, what actually is a learned person should be thinking or what a learned person would be acting or speaking so he is exhibiting his humility which is a very nice quality so when we have a correction so it's nice to reflect and see and then he now this particular verse he is uh, krishna is answering uh, 
the sthita pragya is unaffected by the good or the evil so he's showing this learned person is showing a mental stability and how he is getting this mental stability by having an inner strength of practicing krishna consciousness so i have a, i i thought of two examples for demonstrating good and evil situations for evil situation i thought of vidura vidura is a very good example vidura is a very learned man maybe it's gone it's okay vidura is a very learned man and uh, he acted as always a well wisher for both pandavas and for kauravas as well he was always giving the right counseling for dhritarashtra so that you know the war can be avoided and justice can be done and uh, he he has so much affection for dhritarashtra that he wanted to somehow the other put him back into the right terms and uh, but duryodhana couldn't take it he couldn't tolerate this and what did duryodhana did well, he pointed out pointed out say pointing out his birth that you are just dasi putra you know like he is equivalent to your father's age and you wouldn't really uh, put a spot on his character because he's spotless his character was spotless but he was pointing out that you are dasi putra you are the son of a maid servant and not only that he was also um, blaming that you acted as a spy for the pandavas and and you are always uh, in favor of the pandavas and you are doing injustice to us so vidura thought okay this is the right moment okay he he was affected he he went through a mental agony it this is not so easy like the from the ones who has so much affection if someone says words kill more than the weapons right so he went through a strong mental agony but he took this as an opportunity to become more krishna conscious so what did he do he left um he left the court of the uh, dhritarashtra he left the company of the dhritarashtra and duryodhana and the and dhritarashtra's other sons he went on a pilgrimage and krishna was there he would have gone straight straight to krishna but prabhupad writes in bhagavatam saying that he didn't go because he thought that he became contaminated by the association so he wanted to get purified so he went on pilgrimage visiting so many holy places and then uh, he finally meets uddhava and they discuss different pastimes of krishna and then uh, he asks i want to become more self realized can you give me uh, knowledge can you become my teacher uddhava says no you are equivalent to my father's father i cannot be an instructing spiritual master to you. but maitre is very close by you can go to maitreya and take the guidance then he goes to maitreya and then the uh, they have nice discussions and the, there's a lot of krishna Col- krishna conscious philosophy they discuss together so this is how a devotee deals with the evil situations now another example who who is in a good position but still it became an upheaval upheaval uh, po- situation in his life that is chitraketu chitraketu uh, had the darshan of sankarshan lord sankarshan and he had achieved the planet of uh, vidyadaras and he became the king of vidyadaras so and he's happy he was traveling in the aeroplane with thousand millions of uh, vidyadara women and doing sankirtan but there was a little small little pride somewhere in the corner of his heart and what happened because of that little pride he uh, he pointed out he uh, lord shiva's lord shiva that um, you know maybe this is not right for you to do <laughs> you know uh, parvati was sitting on the lap of uh, lord shiva and in in the assembly of sages and the other assembly in all the sages in the assembly they didn't say a word but uh, chitraketu thought that maybe i can say so he violated a vaishnava etiquette so 
And then what was the result? Mother Parvati thought, okay, she detected this little um, pride in Chitraketu. So she cursed him. So he became demon Vritrasura. And of course, there's another angle also this, uh, to the same pastime. They say that the Lord wants Chitrake to, to come back to the back to Godhead. So he was speeding up the process. So we are not talking of that angle, but we are just wanted to see this, this particular. When Chitrake to God cursed, what did he do? He came down from the airplane, he bowed down, he paid his obeisances, and he said, Mother, I accept your curse. He, he, didn't, he didn't retaliate, okay, I, I, I am faultless, I am actually correcting your husband, this is for your good, you know, he didn't say anything. But he actually said, mother, I accept it. So, but he was, he had good intention, and he was at a good position, but still it became an upheaving situation. So in both the examples, the devotees showed some tolerance. And how is this tolerance? It is not an external exhibition, but it is coming from inner, inner strength, because of the strong practice of Krishna consciousness. So, and what is a learned man's vision should be? That, sorry, Carry on. Okay. Uh, even while engaging his senses in contact with the objects, one who sees the whole world as the energy of Lord Vishnu is neither repelled nor alienated, such a, such a person can become a great devotee. And this is validated in both, this, both the cases, in the Chitraketu situation as well as in Viduras. Because they see Vishnu, Mayam, Idam, Pracham. They see the entire material universe as a product of illusionary energy. So whatever we see, the good and the evil, is actually part, a product of this illusionary energy. So that's what Krishna also uh, was telling Arjuna, you know, don't uh, act only on the bodily platform, but raise above, become really learned. So why does someone lament in this material world? Because they lose something very desirable. Or why, why does someone rejoice? Because they acquire something, their object of desire, right? This is the thing. And uh, when Chitraketu um, got cursed and he left, Lord Shiva was praising the glories of her devotee to Mother Parvati. Narayana parasarve nakutas chen bibiyate swarga pavarga narikeshu api tulyartha darshino Devotees solely engaged in the devotional service of the Supreme Personality of God at Narayana never fear any condition of life. For them, the heavenly planets, liberation and the hellish planets are all the same, for such devotees are interested only in service of the Lord. So this state is, is because of the complete satisfaction of the devotional service they have achieved through their Krishna consciousness. Even in the next uh, two days, we will be reading Parandvishwa Nivatante 2.59, saying how the embedded soul uh, will be able to, they m it may be restricted from the sense enjoyment, but the taste still exists. How do you change the taste? By giving a higher taste. So, then Prabhupada writes in this particular purport that when one is actually Krishna conscious, he automatically loses his taste for pale things. Now, then I was thinking, okay, this is all good. The theory is very good. The examples are perfect. Then, uh, but how do I apply in my life? I'm not a pure devotee. I'm just an aspirant, just began the process. Okay, what about me? You know, definitely. Because I am not Chitraketu. I don't think so. I can act like Vidura. <laughs> or I can, uh, I don't have tolerance. So then I was, um, then I, I, wa I was recollecting uh, one of the lecture, one of the points that I heard in lecture. His Holiness Devamrita Swami was saying, anything can be tolerated in good association. So, 
And another example for this, anything can be tolerated in good association is example of King Parikshit. When he came to, uh, he was listening Srimad Bhagavatam from Sukadeva Goswami, and now they are listening 10th Canto. And here he says, because of my vow on the verge of death, I have given up even drinking water. Yet because I'm drinking the nectar of topics about Krishna, which is flowing from the lotus mouth of your Lordship, my hunger and thirst, which are extremely difficult to bear, cannot hinder me. So did you observe something? Here Parikshit is saying that, which is very difficult to bear, the hunger and, the t hunger and thirst. And uh, that I'm able to control it. But you see how Parikshit Maharaj got cursed initially. <laughs> yeah. So when you uh, did you observe like Parikshit got initially cursed because he was hunting in the forest and then he came to the Samika Rishi's uh, uh, cottage and then the sage was uh, he was absorbed in meditation and he was he was. M uh, he was affected by hunger and fatigue. And because Samit Rishi was not able to offer him anything, he, he was so upset and he put the dead snake around his neck. Right? And, uh, and then uh, his son comes to know and then he curses Parikshit Maharaj. So, but now Parikshit is saying, I'm able to restrain for all the uh, hunger and thirst. And because I am in your association and I am listening to your Krishna conscious uh, kata. And then we will have a question raised, then what is good association? I heard in one Vyasa Puja offering of uh, His Holiness Radha Govinda Maharaj that uh, two devotees of the same here temple, they, were, they had a conflict. And then they went to uh, Maharaj saying that, you know, this person was doing this and that person was doing this and they both were complaining against each other. <laughs> the Maharaj said, go and chant and read Bhagavatam and then come back and tell me. So they both applied reading Bhagavatam and they were chanting. So their consciousness of uplifted and they could resolve the conflict by themselves. So, and every day in our Bhagavatam study, we recite a prayer. Nashta prayeshu abhadreshu nityam bhagavata sevaya bhagavati uttama shloke bhaktir bhavati naishtiki. By regular attendance in classes on bhagavatam and by rendering of service to the pure devotee, all that is troublesome to heart is almost completely destroyed. And loving service unto the personality of Godhead who is praised with transcendental songs is established as an irrevocable fact. And here Prabhupada in this particular purport, he says, here is the remedy for eliminating all inauspicious things within the heart which are considered obstacles in the path of self-realization. The remedy is association of Bhagavatas. There are two types of Bhagavatas, namely Book Bhagavata and Devotee Bhagavata. Both the Bhagavatas are competent remedies. Both of them or either of them can be good enough to eliminate the obstacles. A devotee Bhagavata is as good as book Bhagavata because the devotee Bhagavata leads his life in terms of book Bhagavata. And the book Bhagavata is full of information about personality of Godhead and his pure devotees who are also Bhagavatas. Book Bhagavata and person are identical. Human reason fails how both by serving person Bhagavat and book Bhagavat, one gets a gradual promotion on the path of devotional service. And here, Prabhupada says, it helps a neophyte make progress on and on. So that was a hope for me. So association of devotees is the foremost protection. Because Bhakti, Bhagavan, and Bhakta, the, all the three, they don't belong to the material world. And this is confirmed in Bhagavad Gita 
1426. One who engages in spiritual activities of unalloyed devotional service immediately transcend the modes of material nature and is elevated to spiritual platform. From the very beginning of the one's transaction in bhakti, one is situated on the transcendental platform. And I was also thinking how Srimad Bhagavatam, each canto is related to different limbs of the Krishna. So canto one and two is called Pada Padma, which is representing the lotus feet of the Lord. Canto 3 and 4 is representing Krishna's thighs. 5 is the navel, 6 is the chest, 7 and 8 are the arms, 9 is the neck, 10 is the beautiful smiling face, 11 is the forehead and 12 is the crown of Krishna. And what is so special in this comparison is that all the cantos are full of devotees. And they're not just about pure devotees, they're devotees of uh, the fallen, most fallen, just beginners, but they all achieved Krishna Prema. They had interactions with the material world and how their bhakti has intensified, how they have uh, they presented their realizations in the form of prayers and how finally they have pleased the Lord and they went back home, back to Godhead. So to have a balance both in good and evil is by only by engaging in devotional service and all times. And another example I was thinking is this temple is an exemplary. In all seasons, you know, there is always cleaning of the temple is happening. There's always Mataji's making garlands. There's always boga offering. There's always the deities are opulently worshipped. There's always book distribution going on. There's always prasadam distribution is going on. The same activities are carried over and over. So this, this itself shows that we should be engaged in devotional service continuously so that we will be able to raise to that platform of having a balance between good and evil. And then in this context, I was thinking that what would be a karmi or an impersonalist would be doing? I have an aunt and she has a very staunch practice of impersonalism. So she has been uh, practicing silent vow, like she's, uh, uh, she took a vow not to speak to anyone for one year. And she really did it, like for one year she never spoke to anyone, which was very quite, uh, which was astonishing for me. But on the other side, the whole family members were frustrated because she never picks up the call, she never, re like she never attends the door. So, and the husband says something, she doesn't communicate. The children wanted something, she never communicates. And her reason of uh, explaining is that she doesn't want her to engage in any good or evil talks. But we are also trying not to get involved in good or evil talks. B but how? But we are, we, want, we are trying to engage and speak about more about Krishna consciousness. So, so I just revise the contents. So we have discussed what is upheaval and we have seen Arjuna's eagerness to know what activities of the learned person. We had seen the examples of good and bad, good and evil upheavals with Dura and Chitra Ketu. We learned a learned visions, a learned person's vision and higher taste, but the theory isn't enough. So we, have, we had some quotes and examples, and we learned about importance of book and person Bhagavat association. And how, what is the chance for neophyte to raise is always engaging and taking association of the Vaishnavas. And how Srimad Bhagavatam is, has different limbs of Krishna. And what helps us to move is by always engaging in devotional service. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Hare, Thank you. Any corrections, comments, or questions?
unaffected. Yes. So perhaps you could um, elaborate a little bit on what it means to be unaffected, because you did say that Vidura, he was affected. Yes. Um, but here Krishna is saying, in the material world, one who is unaffected by whatever good or evil he may obtain, he's firmly fixed in perfect knowledge. So do we have to be completely unaffected? It doesn't bother us? Or actually, what does it mean? Tough question. <laughs> um, I th okay. We will be affected, but also we will be unaffected. Depends upon our depth of Krishna consciousness. It's just like the lotus which is growing in the muddy pool. So someone from outside, they see that it's growing in the muddy pool, but not necessarily that it is affected. Because even a drop of water doesn't stay on the leaf of the lotus flower, right? So the depth of Krishna consciousness is what makes a difference. So as the depth or strength of Krishna consciousness is in us, we will be able to accept. Even Chitraketu, in that sense also, he he was affected or he is unaffected? In both ways, he is. Because he was affected that he realized his mistake. But he was unaffected because he accepted so willingly. And Vidura was the same thing. For Vidura, it, was, it is hurting. But at the same time, Vidura also, he took the opportunity. So a devotee knows how to change from, from being affected to un unaffected. That's my humble understanding, sorry. Yeah, just one thing. Uh, one thing as you were speaking, I thought of was that I think Prabhupada says somewhere that um, to be unaffected means you just carry on with your duty. You're, um, you don't stop doing what you should be doing. Because even though you may be affected internally, but you still carry on doing your duty. So in that way, one is unaffected. Thank <laughs> That's you. One. Yes. So, something I would like to add. Yes. So, just like when Parishat Maharaj uh, spoke with Kali, and Kali told him there is no place to stay, mm -hmm. then he said, You stay in the pool. Okay. So, that time Parishat Maharaj was wearing gold tablets. So, Kali went in his tablet and disturbed his mind. And when he Trusting and this one, this was the Kali's uh, <coughs> activities, how he was uh, acting on Prashad Maharaj. So when he went to the uh, ashram of the son of Ishi, that time there was no snake or anything. But Kali put a snake at snake so that his mind was this one and he put that letter snake to uh, the Rishi. So this is the part of the, uh, in the Bhagavatam somewhere. And I have heard this one. So, when we speak something, that maybe it is something proper, then we can understand the things. So, we say that um, Prashant Maharaj was angry and he put a snake. But how uh, Prashant Maharaj can become angry? He is a very nice devotee and uh, from the childhood he has uh, seen Krishna in the womb of his mother. So, he was always meditating on Krishna. So, he cannot be angry or anything. So, this was the Kali's entry in this uh, yoga, that's why this episode happened. So this thing we should see that how things are happening. Okay. We see things are happening, but how it is happening also, just like when the Kurukshetra Yudha was there. Mm -hmm. So how it is happening the Kurukshetra? This is the plan of Krishna. He said, this is my plan. Arjuna is saying, I don't want to fight. And he is saying, you are not a person and you are acting like a fool. And that in Krishna surrendered to him, Arjuna surrendered to him, and whatever Krishna told him, he was ready to do, act on that one. Mm. So these examples are there, and we can understand this, and we will get this example of Chitra Ketu also. Mm. So Chitra Ketu also, you see, he, he, he was not offending, but Parati Madhari felt he is offending. And 
seekers. Mm -hmm. So this Bharatam, everything that is whatever the except that Krishna's plans are there. And when we read the past times of Krishna and say, oh, Bhagavatam, when we read, there are demons also. And Krishna liberated everyone. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Nobody was that uh, he was put in a different condition. Every, Krishna liberated everybody. So the past times of Bhagavatam, when we hear, when we associate with devotees, and we meditate on all these things, chanting and well, whether we, we are not pure devotees, but still we do our regular activities in the moment. When we are connected with the moment, we do regular activities, coming for Mangalati, Guru Puja, chanting Hare Krishna, listening to Bhagavatam. So, although we are not pure devotees, but we are practicing that, that whatever regular our spiritual master has given us. So, if we follow that one, automatically Krishna will take us back home, back to God. The Prabhupada has given us guarantee that when you are following this all regulatory principle and this one, you will go back home.